Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, October 7th. Unfortunately, the first video, for some reason, the audio wasn't working. So I'm going to do a quick recap and get this back out to you. Anyways, to make a long story short, we've got the market momentum yesterday. It shows us that uh, the market is overbought. We're over the one point, uh, the 101 mark, which indicates an overbought territory, and the 99 mark, which indicates an oversold territory. Now the recent volatility has pushed it way out of the norms, uh, but still, that being said, yesterday the market closed at 102.33 at this price right here, and more or less we are overbought, and usually the upward momentum will carry through. I pointed out uh, in the first video that we'll probably get some type of push up today, possibly Monday, and then I would think the market would uh, reverse sharply to the downside. And we just did have some uh, good non-farm payroll numbers um, and that put a big pop in the market so we're going to probably get a gap to the upside which is kind of what I'm anticipating usually I like to see a gap up in it and it would look as though it's an exhaustion gap meaning the markets overbought it gaps higher the next day and then we see selling step in and take it back down so that's kind of where we stand with the momentum now if we take a quick look at the volume on the NYSE the key thing I look for here is the volume here on the NYSE. NYSE is full of the big brand name stocks and that's what the masses like to trade. They like to trade brand name stocks and you can see yesterday we had about uh, 12 to 1 buying meaning there's 12 shares being bought to every one being sold and that means everybody's piling into the market and the fact that the stock market is at a short-term resistance zone and uh, it's had a few days to the upside it is overbought and usually when everybody's piling in that's usually when the big guys start unloading into these small players who are just kind of driving the prices higher uh, out of pure fear greed now let's take a quick look at the dollar index Here's the 60 minute dollar index. You can see we're trading down at a support zone. We just had those non-farm payroll numbers giving a little bit of a spike to the downside. Overall, the trend is up in the US dollar and with any luck, it will continue to move higher with this nice stair-stepping action and uh, we'll see how things play out. I did point out a, a few days ago when the, when the US dollar index was up here that we're likely gonna get a pullback into a, a, a key support zone which is also a trend line support. And if it breaks through this and we get some type of bear flag action, we'll actually be looking to likely short the US dollar for a continued move down. But right now we are at key support. And if we do get a bounce in the dollar, which I'm anticipating, then we will see lower prices in stocks and commodities. Taking a look at crude oil. Crude oil uh, is four hour chart going back a few months. You can see we've had a nice bounce in crude oil the last couple of days. We are into a key resistance zone. It's had a nice move up, but it is overbought on a short-term basis. Wouldn't be surprised if we get that bounce in the dollar. That crude oil will come right back down to the 76 level. Looking at gold and silver, they both pretty much have the same chart patterns. So I'll just cover gold real quick. Overall, it is trading sideways within this chop I pointed out a week and a half ago. It is trading up at resistance and more or less volume is declining and it's working its way through this uh, consolidation zone. When it does break out, it will probably see a very substantial move either to the upside or to the downside. And right now I see the trend as overall down with the consolidation, so I am neutral to bearish at this time. That's the same for silver. Uh, looking at the bonds, I'll just pull up the TBT, or sorry, the TLT bonds. They've been moving up very nicely the past uh, couple months. Overall, these last surges are starting to get very toppy, and I've been pointing it out for a long time. I don't want to get in front of it for this exact reason. It can continue to trend for a while. The fact that we're getting these much larger whipsaws, uh, we had a high here, a new high here. If we get another surge uh, to the upside with these nice, huge, uh, kind of volatile ranges, we might actually have a very good shorting opportunity in TBT, but again, we just let this thing mature and wait to see what happens overseas because that is playing a big effect on uh, on U.S. bonds and the prices that are going up. So not getting in front of this trade, but I, I would love to see another push to a new high. The higher it goes, the, uh, the harder and sharper the fall will be down the road. And of course, we'd be looking at playing the TBT, which if I just pull it up real quick, pull the TBT and zoom way out you can see there's potential for a massive move to the upside eventually 
and uh, there's a huge potential gain there and there is major resistance to be at uh, 3250 looking at the SP 500 sorry I'm flying through these charts but I just want to get it up and out make a long story short we have Fibonacci retracement of the 75 percent level if I just pull it out here we have got the it doesn't quite show it on this uh, on this indicator but I'll pull it up in one second here we've got a 75 percent retrace of yesterday which is this dark red line and we're gonna get a gap up this morning hopefully it'll be an exhaustion gap just like what we saw in the last bounce right here you get this big gap to the upside everybody gets bullish on all the news meanwhile the market is still not in a healthy condition and it gets sold off so if we're lucky we'll see a sell down to this 25 percent level if it breaks through that then we've got a potential for a very large decline after that the futures chart of the S&P this morning showing the spike from the news if I just uh, zoom back a bit here on the far left of the page you will see the high volume this is regular trading hours for the futures contract 930 to um, 4 and through overnight trading we have seen sideways chop and then we had the non-farm payroll numbers come out and we just saw a big jump in the price and uh, usually when something goes straight back up it usually comes back down so we'll see how that plays out today and uh, again the higher the prices push here today and Monday the more bearish I actually get on it simply because it's overbought and it's pushing into a key resistance zone so uh, I'm not panicking over a move like this usually the last kind of move you get a big drop in price anyways that's it for now and I'll talk to you in a bit bye bye